Welcome back to Veggie Quest. This is a reverse puzzle game where you want to build a maze that takes this potato spud warrior as long as possible to reach the carrot in a box. There's a lot of different elements here, but if I just build nothing, you see he will try to get to the carrot as fast as possible. He has this thing where he will move up to two tiles in a single direction in a single move. There's also a wall which can be placed and block off the potato warrior. There is the bunny, which obviously he cannot hit. There's the portal, which can teleport them. And of course, the carrot in a box. And I also have placeable portals, which I assume come in pairs. And then I can do as many of these as I want. So somehow I got to figure out the best possible solution. I almost want to try an idea first, where I just make like a bunch of rows. So here, we could go through the portal, then come out into the next portal. And then it could go into the next portal and then come out here. And because he's running behind the bunny, he's forced to go slow. This guy normally goes fast. He's actually waiting for the bunny so he can start dashing behind him. And that gets me one carrot. But I definitely want a three carrot solution. So what does that look like? Well, if I want to, I could make a path slightly longer. Like I have one portal here and then the next portal here. And that creates the length of by, I assume, one. Wait, no, this is impossible. Oh, I see why it's impossible, because the bunny can only run back and forth. So if it hit the wall down here, it would go back and it would block off the potato warrior, which is unsolvable. I mean, the only other idea right now is just make a really, really long path. But those never, never go as well as you hope. Let me just mess around with this idea, right? Bunny goes, potato's got to almost dodge the bunny a bit <laughs> and then come around, huh? Juke him a little, huh? That's an interesting maneuver. What if I start putting in more portals then? How does this change things? Oh, okay, that forces him to stutter even more. Interesting. There's still, like, a lot of wasted space in the middle, but I can sense, like, the bunny having to go this far and then Potato have to wait for it and then make it back. I'm up to 23 now, and I haven't even really used the middle of the map. So it's almost like I can delete these and maybe just delete this right now because I almost want the bunny's journey to start by going up. Yeah, keep that bunny's journey going up a long way and then continue it something like this. Block that. Yeah, here goes the bunny. Long journey. Huge bunny journey. Now coming back. Now here comes the Spud Warrior. He's still got to go through. That's not even two carrots. That's not even two. Oh my god, this level is deep. So I feel like I should redesign this from the ground up. Because all I'm doing is creating a long path that's blocked off by the bunny for the longest time possible. It's only once the bunny steps out of the way that Potato Warrior can win. So realistically, what would that actually look like? if I were to, from the ground up, design it. Like, maybe I would have the bunny teleport right away, or I would have the potato wait for the bunny, like, way back here. So whatever journey the bunny goes through, potato's got to wait for him to make it all the way back. So if the bunny makes it into the portal, then I could almost create, like, a big staircase, forcing it to continue. Then maybe, like, a staircase going down or something. I don't know how long that can actually keep up for, though. Yeah, actually, what if I do it the other direction, right? Face in here. And then we could have some sort of down staircase. Just really force it to go the distance. Like that. So the bunny's got to go a long way. Where does he... Oh! He can just run behind the bunny. What if there is no room behind the bunny? Now the bunny has to do the whole trek. And then... Did it jump over the bunny? I thought the bunny was supposed to jump. So right... Oh, it juked it there. Hmm. Okay, if it juked it, I got to block this off then, I think. So it has no space to juke. I can't let it juke anywhere. Got to make the bunny do the whole trek, and now it goes. Come on, at least give me a second carrot. 51, there's only two carrots, so clearly better can be done. The reason I made it a staircase is so the potato worry would get slowed down. Now, if you pay attention to the bunny as I go step by step, you'll notice something. It takes one move for it to move a tile and teleport. One move for that. So that's equivalent to just going horizontally without teleporting. It goes one tile. The main difference is for the Potato Warrior. While he can normally go two per and teleport, having to be a staircase forces him to only go one tile laterally at a time, because otherwise he will basically sprint. Now, I'm not sure if changing that will be enough, because I might need a whole new idea. And actually, let me mess around with this a bit more. What would happen if it were all just straight lines? Might be a bit further for the bunny, but then shorter for the potato, which should result in an overall lower time. Nope! It got me three carrots. <laughs> I noticed the bunny was actually a lot slower. So, okay, clean solution. Next level looks interesting. There's unremovable walls, and the only thing I can place are portals. At least this enemy is pretty basic. He'll only move one square at a time. 
But interestingly, six almost gets me one carrot. Well, I guess if there's no walls, I mean, the simplest thing I can think of is put a portal here just to get him out of here and then drop him in the corner, make him go to the other corner. Oh, uh, wait a second though. This won't work that well because he's just going to go back. He's just going to go back. Hold on, wait. So do I have to have like a bunch of teleporting out shenanigans? Like just get out of here or is there more to this level? Nine. Oh, this is interesting. Hold on, let me split up the left side portals a bit more then if that's what's happening right now. Like, I think I need a portal that's here, and I need a portal that's here, just far away, so... That's still nine! What? Okay, do I need to, like, move this away? Just to further separate it? Like that? Well, it does get me up to ten. See how he had to, like, make the journey all the way up to that thing there? Why? Why did he have to do that? Yeah, I guess it's just faster to jump to the fifth portal in line. Let me just reset all these and think. He goes into the first portal. Put him down in this corner, I don't care. I want him to come back in the second portal. And actually, given this, which way would he go? He would go to the next portal. But then let's say I get in the third, and then would come back in the fourth. Would that work? That just adds one more move. That's it. So then let me experiment more. Between these two, if I were to space them out by one more, then he would double back like that. And that doubling back is what I'm looking for. If I add a third one, will it double back a third time? It will. And if I add a fourth, will it double back a fourth time? This should be the highest number. Well, 10. And if I add a fifth, will it double back a fifth time? No, it will go straight to the fifth one. Okay. Now, I wonder if I could block off the path on the way to the fifth one with the portal that comes out here. Because theoretically, that shouldn't let him be faster at all. Never mind, it does. Huh? I didn't think about that route. It's too smart. What if I change up the third and fourth portal? Like if the third portal is here, I still will come back out from each of those. Then what if the fourth portal is here? I still don't jump ahead. Okay, and then the fifth portal could be as far away as possible from the first portal on the left side. Like I imagine now I'd come in and out. And finally, 11, a three carat solution. Awesome puzzle. Here I can place the bunnies and place one whole wall blockade and a ton of portals. Oh my God. And the thing is with bunnies, the enemies can't touch them, and they mate if they run into each other. And five moves barely got anything, so how do I stall this guy as long as possible? If I have a couple bunnies like this, I'll just juke them. Yeah, getting around them is pretty easy. What if I, like, place a wall blockade? He just goes the other way, then. The thing is, you gotta be careful with the bunnies. I mean, too many bunnies, and the puzzle becomes impossible. Yeah, even that is impossible. I do wish this game would kind of let you see it through with the bunnies, just so you could see how it's impossible. Because as it is right now, it's just kind of plopping down bunnies and guessing, which is certainly no way to go about a puzzle. I need some sort of weird concept that involves portals. Like maybe there's a bunny going back and forth, and our onion knight has to wait. Maybe wait longer. Well, if I have like three bunnies, he has to wait for all of them before he can pass. Out of curiosity, if I almost have the bunnies kind of go down, he has to, like, wait for a bunch of trains of bunnies. So that's kind of interesting. Thankfully, he doesn't just teleport behind them. But what if the path is longer for these bunnies, and there's just more of them? Okay, that makes it impossible. Does this make it impossible? No, it doesn't. It does mean, again, he has to wait longer and eventually gets there. But if I could get the bunnies to, like, bounce back, this wall makes it impossible. What if it actually is an endless train like this? I mean, now that there's fewer bunnies, he can just kind of send it, but... I could shift the whole train forward a little. Because now, oh, now he's just got to, oh, dodge him like that, which can make it. How about I introduce to you another bunny that maybe could block his path on the way to that? Yeah, he's got to follow that way. And then, oh, wow, he's doing one hell of a route. No, he's just a magic man. He sees through everything. Man, I really don't get this level at all. Like, this is the best I can do. Just make him wait for the conga line of bunnies. <laughs> but it's not even halfway to one carrot. Maybe I should be asking myself, why is there one wall here? What kind of maze can I make with one wall, but not zero? I have no idea. I don't get this level at all. Like, none of this makes any sense to me. Okay, what if there's like a big looping thing and just so many bunnies where it's like a massive train that there's only one gap for this guy to slot in, and it would be here. So not only does he have to wait for that gap, but also he has to, this is impossible. Are there too many bunnies or something? Maybe there's too many bunnies. Still impossible? Really? 
Can he not get in this gap? Because it's not like any of the bunnies are going to mate. Yeah, the bunnies will never mate, and there will be a gap that he could follow. How is this unsolvable? Because won't the gap eventually be here and then let him escape? Or is he just not smart enough to see through the lines? I mean, I feel like I've smarted, outsmarted the game's AI here. If I do this, he finds other gaps. He, he can find the gaps, and I guess he does follow them now, but somehow he wasn't able to find the gaps otherwise? If I have a bunny here, it suddenly becomes impossible, which doesn't make any sense to me. How does the addition of this bunny change a damn thing? That doesn't change anything. Okay, and at least now he's like waiting in the conga line. Not for very long though. Well, maybe I'll block this off then. No, okay, this is fine. This is fine. So there's just something weird with the portals that make the bunny behavior strange. But now he's actually waiting a long way. But he's not waiting as long as possible because the gap should be here. That's where he should be waiting for the gap. So no bunnies on the left side, bunnies on the right side is fine. Now he has to wait a huge amount of time for the gap. And then once in the gap, follow through, and hopefully it's gonna be not even one carrot. That's not even one carrot, what is happening? How? I mean, I'm not using a wall, sure, but like, I don't think I need to. This looks genuinely impossible. The only thing a wall is good for is making the bunnies bounce off of it. Like, I wonder if the bunny somehow has to travel the distance of the map, bounce off the wall, and then come back, and only by the time it's back, then allow the onion to go through? Which doesn't make any sense to me. How would that even be possible? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea how the fuck to solve this. Hopefully in the main game this is a late game puzzle, because it's kicking my ass. How about this? What the hell? An eggplant with abs? He can spend a turn to switch his weapon to that of warrior, rogue, or mage. So he can adapt a lot of different characters' movesets? So that's the one that lets him sprint, right? What if I build a staircase for him? Does he just move diagonally? Yeah, he moves diagonally. That's what the two swords mean. So he can dash two in any direction, or he can move diagonally, or he could teleport over a wall, like the mage, and that's really good too. Oh no. So I gotta stop all three? Hmm. So switching his weapons takes a turn. So I guess I would almost want to force that to happen, right? Like if he went two up and then had to like stutter step or something like that, I mean, that would take a good amount of moves, yeah? Or maybe I could then force him to mage? Yeah, it seems like I should be trying to constantly getting him to switch between powers. So we could dash two, switch, go diagonally, switch, Oh, let me do a little extra here. Maybe make him go, go diagonal twice, then head here. Then make him just head once, maybe diagonal. And let me just see this, right? So a switch. Oh, he'll teleport there as mage. Ooh, hold on. It's never that easy. Well, let me think about this some more then. He would spend a turn right away to switch to mage, yeah? I mean, that could be kind of helpful. Because then I could get him to do a diagonal. I could just make him keep going diagonal, kind of like this. Teleport here, then diagonal again. And I mean, this is already pretty disruptive. Yeah, he's taking a lot of time to switch, getting up there, and I haven't even used most of the map yet, so I kind of like how this is going. Maybe after diagonal, force him again to go diagonal, and then teleport his way out. Well, if he teleports, I would want him to then come around, but he, he's probably just going to teleport over this wall here. I'll just leave this up, force him to teleport over this wall. I don't know, I mean, maybe this will at least get me one carrot, because he's got to do a lot of switching and then teleport. That's one, but it's an interesting challenge. Let me try a slightly different start because I feel like this whole thing kind of cascades off the start. Yeah, why don't I just let it start like this? Let, like say he dashes two, moves over one, dashes two. That's three moves to get here. Actually, right, better yet, I block this off, force him to teleport. Moves once, twice, switch to third, teleport to fourth, switch again, then become diagonal. Move up here, switch again to teleport. Maybe I should just be keeping track of amount of moves to get to the corner. Just the most optimal way to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to get to the corner. Can I do better than seven? How about this start? One switches two, three switches four, five switches six, seven, eight to get to the corner. That's pretty good. And actually, if I want to, I could force him to switch again into a diagonal. I mean, this seems like a really solid start. After diagonal, switch to teleport. And then we are done teleporting for a bit, at least. Force a diagonal switch. I mean, it seems like a good, effective use of space right now. Well, let's see. Maybe there's something I can learn from this, because... Oh, there's a teleport I missed. It is a 25, though, so it is my new best. I was slightly suboptimal in here. 
So he teleports, and he's just, of course, gonna teleport again. Right. Okay, so it straight up feels better if I just get rid of that block, right? Like, that just gives me one more. Yeah, it gives me the 26. Crazy how good straightaways are. He doesn't want to become two at a time because that takes time to switch away. So look at this. It takes nine moves for him to get from bottom to top. Another nine moves from top to bottom. And then it's going to be eight to get to the finish. Could it be nine, nine, nine? It's also the first journey has four swaps. Then the next top to bottom only has three swaps. And then the next bottom to the top only has two swaps. But I mean, how much better can I do? I don't have much space. Like, let me look at all the space I realistically have. This is what I have. It's not much. I feel like there's something interesting about a start like this, where it'll teleport, then switch to diagonal, then switch to teleport. And then, like, I don't really present a situation where teleport is necessary. It'll just kind of walk, walk, walk. And then it'll have to switch to diagonal, ideally, right? But then, like, if I can make them switch to teleport again, and then switch to diagonal? And then switch back to teleport? I mean, that's kind of interesting too. Because then he'd be forced to walk around like this. Probably teleport again. I think I'll just leave it dry right now. Is there any merit to this? Uh, well, he goes diagonal for longer than I'd hoped, unfortunately. Yeah, I'll teleport and then go super diagonal. Um, what if he teleports here? Because that at least gets rid of a diagonal. I mean, it's 25 again. Ooh, hold on. Ooh, what if the box goes back here? I actually force a teleport into this spot and force another teleport into this spot, which I was only blocking up because I kind of had to, and then force another diagonal. Sure, it's teleport into teleport, but with a lot of garbage in the way. So that might be a pretty efficient use of space. I don't know. If it goes diagonal, I could have forced him to teleport again and then maybe force a diagonal up here and then force another teleport for the hell of it. How's that go? Because, I mean, he's going to spend a lot of time switching and stuff here. Oh, he double teleports. What if I get rid of this piece? Well, that should at least be 26 again, yeah? And it is, but you know, 26 isn't enough. Well, I guess I could prevent the double teleport if I block up this space. At least it's pretty damn annoying now. I think that's also going to be 26. Oh, it's 27! And actually, I guess it's just this fine to zigzag around. Annoying that's not three carrots, but at least it's progress. He's already teleporting here. So just making him teleport again doesn't help me. But if I switch to diagonal here, then he'll just be going diagonal previously. Does that actually cost me? It does. Okay, I'm going to switch it up then. What if he happened to be teleporting into here? And then previously was diagonaling. And then previously was teleporting. Well, then we got diagonal to diagonal. But I guess I could go like this. Force a teleport later. Is that going to be 27 as well? Because it feels pretty good. Oh! Ooh! 28! There we go. The three carat solution. That's the demo. Ah, but there's one level I haven't done yet. If this video ends now, then I couldn't figure out this level. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. It's been fun reverse puzzling. And I'll see you on the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace.